I'm 10 years old, and my favorite Disney animated villain is Jafar. Hi, I'm Stitch. I'm 8 years old, and my favorite animated Disney villain is Screen Slaver. And I'm Tony, their Disney dad. And my favorite Disney animated villain is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Okay. Welcome to Disney Discussions. Hello! Aloha. I thought you were going to pick Captain Hook, actually. I wanted to pick Jafar, but Barrow got him. I was going to pick Maleficent, but then I'm like, hey, Jafar. Welcome to episode 31 of Disney Discussions. Disney Discussions is a family-friendly podcast where me, Tony the Disney Dad, and my two boys, Stitch and Sparrow, discuss all things Disney. This week, we have the latest Disney news. We got the main topic, which is going to be a Disney quiz from the Disney Play app. Let's take a Disney quiz. <laughs> we have the Disney Media Pick of the Week, Disney Trivia about Disneyland's opening ooh, day, ooh. and the Question of the Week. Welcome to Disney Discussions. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hope everyone is having a good week. Hi. We're recording this on July 22nd. Sorry, it's been a while since we released a normal episode. A norm- yeah, we had a bonus episode yeah. last week where we put all three of our Build Our Park series into one episode. Oh, Some people episode, wanted yeah. that, so yeah. we did that and got good downloads. So now we're back to our normal, and hopefully we could get to do this every week. If not, we'll do it every other week. Oh, yeah, because um, this week um, we had a bunch of we had like basketball camps. Yeah, basketball week. camps and VBSs, all that kind of stuff. If you didn't listen to that bonus episode, we have a new announcement for you. And that announcement is we have a brand new... Logo! And merch! That's right. So Matt Marlino from Love of the Mouse podcast, check them out. Did a great new logo for us. It's up on the website. Check it out. But also, this logo looks so nice. We decided to put it on T-shirts and yeah. phone cases mm-hmm. and laptop cases and sweatshirts and stickers. So check it out. Stuff. No hats. No hats. No, mm. no. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and also, and also with our new logo and new merchandise, we have a coupon code for you. So starting on July twenty fourth, running to the thirtieth. At midnight, use the code ALOHA, that's A-L-O-H-A, in all caps, and you'll get 30% off your purchase. So go to shop.disneydiscussions.com, or just go to www.disneydiscussions.com and see the button on the right side, click that, and you'll see our merch. But we also, some cool people have designed other Disney-type shirts, so those are in our store as well, so check those out. Again, coupon code ALOHA. And if you have any suggestions on how we could... Make our bridge maybe look better, and if you would like um, it on different stuff, you can always contact us. Yep, and we're thinking about... Still no hats. Can't do hats. <laughs> Didn't work. Didn't we might, work. Well, not on that site, but we might be able to figure out something else out. Also, another announcement. So we don't have a Disney trip planned for the foreseeable future. I think we're going to go in 2020, early 2020, to go for Star Wars Land, but... We're going on a Disney cruise! That's right. And... Instead of free Disney trip, we decided to go to Universal. Universal. That's right. So we are leaving out of New York November 10th. It's going to be a Christmas cruise. We have never done a Disney cruise before, so this is really exciting. I've never done a cruise before. That's right. Uh, no, I haven't done a cruise either. Yep, we get to go on the Disney Magic, leave from New York. Two days at sea. We go to the private island, Castaway K. Okay. Or Key, how do they say key. it? It's key. Yeah, it's spelled K, but Key. Okay. We go to Florida for one day, and then we're at sea, and then we're back home. So... Usually, um, with those kind of trips, you get a free Mm -hmm. um, entrance into Walt Disney World. But since uh, Sparrow is such a Harry Potter fan at the moment. I'm a Harry Potter maniac. Yep. We are going to take a side trip and go to Universal. We're going to try and do both parks, the the Harry Potter stuff, um, and do that. If we can't do the full thing in the second part, just do Harry Potter. That's right. So, and the crowd calendar says it's slow. So. Be on the lookout. If you guys, if anybody listening is happening to go on that same exact Disney cruise, let us know. Reach out to us on the website. We'd love to meet up with you. Yeah. Or um, if you have any tips for us yes. for going on yeah. a Disney cruise, we, we'd like to hear from you. Or, um, But we will also be doing some podcasts from the Disney yes, cruise. Yes, we will. So you guys get a full trip review when we get back. Or maybe we might do maybe one on the cruise. That's what I said. We're going to record oh. on the cruise, yeah. Oh, I thought you said we'll do like one a night. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll actually record while we're on the cruise. Maybe a, a short recap of the, the day. Yeah, we can do like and one then, a night. Yep, yeah, and then we'll have a full review when we get back. So it's yeah. November 10th we are going. So a little oh. bit away. It's 110 days away. 
don't mind if you kind of maybe you might hear the ocean, so don't mind. We're <laughs> gonna be on a cruise, gonna be at sea, so. All right, one more little announcement before we get to the news this week. We're gonna have a three P um movie bonus episode. That's right. So we're gonna record right after this and release it later this week. A bonus episode where we review Solo, Incredibles two, and Ant Man and, and the Wasp. Which was all three were really good movies, but. My list of those three. No, no. Don't. We'll save it for the bonus episode. No, we want to save it. Uh, 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 uh. We'll save it for the bonus episode. So be on the lookout for that. That'll come in your podcast app. All right. You guys ready for the news? The news. The news. All right. Media news first. Yay. Billy D. Williams will return as Lando Calrissian in Star Wars Episode Nine. So sources confirmed to Hollywood Reporter that Williams will indeed be returning to the Star Wars film franchise for the first time since Return of the Jedi. Lando Calrissian's character made his suave debut in 1980's Empire Strikes Back. And in recent years, he uh, has done some voices. He's been on the convention circuit. He did the voice for Lando in uh, the Rebels cartoon. So that'd be good to come back because honestly, they need somebody to come back from the original trilogy because they killed off Luke. Killed off Han Solo. Princess Leia is no longer alive. So that'd be good. That's a good return. It, I would. I wished he would have been on um, with Han again. Yes. But what are you going to do? I mean, 3PO and R2 are still there. Yeah, that's true. And so is Chewbacca. So, so is Chewbacca. So there are people from the original. Yeah. So that's exciting news about episode 9. Avengers Infinity War with over two hours of bonus features on digital and movies anywhere. And 4K July 31st and Blu-ray August 14th. That's right. That's a lot of work. <laughs> Just for title. Yep. So that's right. So Infinity War, although it's still, I think it's still playing in the movie theaters, is oh, actually real? coming out on digital uh, next week, the thirty first, July thirty first, which is a Tuesday, and then and then August fourteenth on Blu ray. Oh, cool. So be on the lookout for that. That'd be really cool. Two hours of bonus features. So that'll wow. be cool. We'll check that. We'll when definitely be getting that. The movie and then bonus features. It's like four hours. <laughs> Disney announces Jungle Cruise and Maleficent 2 release date changes and other changes to their movie schedule. Fans can join Dwayne Johnson, also known as The Rock, and Emily Blunt in the film adaptation of the beloved Disney Parks attraction, Jungle Cruise, coming on October 11th, 2019. Ooh, yay! So we got that coming up next year, and then also the follow-up to Maleficent, which I think we talked about a couple yeah. podcasts yeah. ago, the live-action retelling of Sleeping Beauty, the sequel to that, um, will hit theaters on May 29th, 2020. There's been some other changes. Uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wrecker Ralph 2, will now simply be known as Ralph Breaks the Internet. So they're dropping Wrecker Ralph 2 from the title okay. for some reason. But that is still coming out November 21st this year. Mary Poppins Returns moves up almost a week to December 19th from its original Christmas Day release. Uh, I thought it would... It would yeah. I like it at Christmas. It would be a good Christmas release. Yeah, well, it's still around Christmas. It's, oh, yeah. it's kind of taking that, um, what would have been Star Wars, the 19th date and yeah. using that. It's probably why they're doing that. Yep. An untitled Disney live action mo- film scheduled for November 8th, 2019 has been removed completely. Okay. So we're not sure what that was. As we mentioned, Indiana Jones 5 has officially been pushed back to July 9th, 2021. So they're redoing the script for that. And a previously untitled feature film from Marvel has been pushed up to February 12th, 2021 from july 30th so we think that's um probably going to be black panther 2 that's yeah. speculation there uh since black panther did so well in february this year they're going to do that so a star wars story home release date reportedly revealed that's right so along with um infinity war solo is coming out september 14th on digital and september 25th on blu-ray so be on the lookout for that i'm sure there's going to be lots of bonus features <laughs> for that as well Evan Rachel Wood and Sterling K. Brown are set to join the cast of Frozen 2. So Evan Rachel Wood and Sterling K. Brown are in talks to lend their voices to Frozen 2, the sequel to the 2013 smash hit. Adina Menzel, Kristen Bell, and Josh Gad are returning as their roles for this movie. Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck will also be back to direct, so they're bringing the team back, adding two more um, actors to this. Wait, and so they may not have Kristoff? No, I'm, I'm sure he's coming back, too. Mm. And uh, you didn't like him? Mm-mm. <laughs> And so well, Frozen is the only reason I like the movie anymore. <laughs> and Frozen Two is set to debut on November twenty seventh, twenty nineteen. Lots of Disney movies that we have to see in twenty nineteen. Yeah, every like, year. There's more of- and more Disney movies coming out every year. Yeah, 
We're going to see probably all of them. Yep. Disney is bringing back Star Wars Clone Wars. Yay! That's right. So Clone Wars, this happened um, around the time that Disney bo- bought Star Wars. They yeah. canceled the Clone Wars series and actually canceled it. They didn't know it was going to end. So they stopped making it. And so they moved on to Rebels. But now during San Diego Comic-Con this weekend, they announced that they are doing a new season of Clone Wars. So 12 additional episodes coming to Clone Wars set closely to uh, Revenge of the Sith oh. time, episode three. And we actually, there's a trailer online, so be sure to check the cho- so- show awesome. notes for that. Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka is in it. Yep. And it looks like this um, series is going to be on Disney's um, streaming service that comes out. I still year. haven't finished the series, but I'm on the last season. Yeah. All right. So it looks like Disney has won the fo- the bid for Fox. Comcast has dropped its bid for 21st Century Fox. So we reported last time that Disney upped their bid. And I think we said that they they won it, but that wasn't true. The Comcast still had time. What? To it wasn't um, <laughs> true. They didn't talk like it's no part of it. I said, okay, Disney, here's your money. Here, it's just me, but it's, it's 21st Century Fox. Comcast, get out of here. This is what I want to do now, okay? Okay, goodbye. <laughs> That's the Fox boardroom voice. Yes, so, yeah. I'm talking Fox. So Comcast kind of gave up and said, all right, Disney, you can have it. So Comcast, this is a good idea. I wasn't going to choose Comcast anyway. <laughs> Comcast had a bid for $65 billion for Fox. Why is that funny? Why did I choose it? Movie studio, which was responsible for franchises like Avatar and X-Men. Yep, but Disney's most recent bid was $71 billion. Why is that more money? I'm glad I chose that. So the battle with Disney isn't completely over because Comcast said Thursday would still continue to pursue its bid for the British broadcaster Sky, which Disney is also trying to buy through Fox. And Comcast has offered $34 billion for that. And uh, Disney has said that that's kind of the crown jewel of this this acquisition. So we'll see what happens there. It is because I want Disney to buy it on the way and choose them in the first place. I know. All right. Get out of here, Fox boardroom guy. We don't want you here. Oh, okay. (laughs) I'm back. Oh, good. Are you guys ready for some Disneyland news? Uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So some technical news is my favorite part, but some technical glitches affected Disney both Disney parks earlier in the month on Friday, July sixth. <gasps> proved to be a long day for Disney. Technical difficulties. Yes. Technical difficulties. <gasps> proved to be a long day oh, no. for. Disney parks across the country after a network outage caused technical glitches with its theme parks in Orlando and Anaheim. The outage, which began around 4 p.m. on that Friday, uh, July 6th, affected Disney's reservation system, leaving guests unable to book their favorite dining options. According to a tweet by Walt Disney World, the official Twitter feed for them, said the downage also affected the FastPass MaxPass system, My Disney Experience app, and the Walt Disney World website. So during the outage, people can still use their fast passes that okay. they had, but they couldn't make new ones. Oh, that's The annoying. system was back up by 8 p.m. So just like a four-hour outage, but when you rely so heavily on that stuff, it, it's a stuff. long time. Like you could have your um, fast passes in, like your yep. three in just four hours, right. and then you can't book any more. Yep. Or if you want to change it, you had a fast pass for a yeah. ride, and it doesn't yeah. need a fast pass, you can't you couldn't make those changes. Yeah. Also, Disneyland has experienced the hottest day at the Disneyland Park ever in its 63 years. You want to know how hot it was? It was 113 degrees on July 6th, actually that same day. So it's the hottest it's ever gotten at Disneyland. Pretty crazy, right? That should have been our trivia. Yeah. Yeah, it was new. (laughs) What was the hottest day in Disney World? I don't know. (laughs) Somebody find that out. Let us know. Disneyland celebrated its 63rd anniversary on oh, cool. July 17th last week with a pre-parade character cavalcade. What does that mean? So pre-parade. it means to mark the occasion, the park presented a cavalcade of 63 Disney characters oh. before both presentations of the Pixar play parade. Was like Oswald there and stuff? Um, They actually have Oswald walking around sometimes <gasps> at Disneyland. Yeah. Oh, so I 63 characters to mark its 63rd anniversary. Pretty cool, right? I want to go there. Cool. What characters do you wish you would have seen? That what do you think that's a cool character that they don't normally have? Disneyland or Disney World? Either way. Uh, Disney World. I wish they had Oswald the Lucky Rat. You want Oswald there? Is there any oh, character no. Stitch that you want to see that we haven't seen? No. Okay. What about you though? Is there any that? I don't know. I don't think so. You can go before me. Cause... What about know. Scrooge McDuck? Oh, Scrooge would be cool to meet. You could actually meet him now in Dino Land. Uh, Animal Kingdom. Oh, yeah, Scrooge and Launchpad, yeah. Launchpad, yeah. 
Huey, Dewey, and Louie would be cool. Oh, that would be cool. Right? Yeah. And Webby, too. Oh, yeah. Jack Skeleton? That'd be a cool one. They only have him at like Halloween and Christmas at the party, so that'd be cool. Thanos would yeah. be cool, though. To meet him with the Infinity Thanos, Gauntlet. Yeah. He'd be huge. Is that your Thanos impression? No. Oh. This is my Thanos impression. <laughs> I do it all the time. Okay, throw it. There's a rumor that a Wreck-It Ralph VR attraction is Whoa. coming this fall to Walt Disney World and Disneyland. Yay! So we know how there's... This is actually at um, probably Disney Springs in downtown Disney. Mm-hmm. So you know there's that VR for Star Wars there. It's going to be the same thing. Um, the company that does it, called The Void, is this is just a rumor, but it's going to take kind of half the space, half of it. They're going to keep the Star Wars thing, so it's doing so well. And the other half is going to be uh, some kind of Wreck-It Ralph VR right around when the new Wreck-It Ralph movie comes out. Cool. Is That'd there going to be, be cool. like an age limit thing? Because I know at Comic Con, you had to be 12 to do Yeah, it. with VR, I think there is. I don't know if it's 12, it might be 10 or 11, something like that. Yes. But, but we're not going anytime soon, so. Ooh, wait. <laughs> Let's we see. Going, when we go. We're going nine, 20, you might be able to. Might be. 10. Um, maybe like 9 like nine and a half. We'll yeah. No. So well, it we'll depends. If we go in March, yeah. No, I know, but depends when we go. But if we go in March in 2020, then yeah, you would be. And I'll be 13. So we'll have to check that out. Also. When we like get on the plane, I would be officially ten. Yeah. It'd be cool, like if we're on March first, I'm ten. <laughs> All right, a closing date has been revealed for a Bugs Land at Disney California Adventure. So I'm not that sad. We well, we've never been, so it's not. That <laughs> no, big so of a I'm not that us. sad. But a few months ago, Disneyland Resort announced that it'll be closing Bugs Land at Disney California Adventure to make way for a superhero theme land for the park in 2020. Superhero. Now, now much else was announced. At the time, but thanks to Disney Parks blog, they have revealed that the last day to experience a Bugs Land is on September 4th, 2018. So if you're going out there, make sure you check out those those rides for the last time. Forever. <laughs> but at least it's going to be a Marvel superhero land. That's yeah. Gonna be <laughs> cool. <laughs> So that's going to be cool. All right. I just want to give you a remind, uh, reminder of where to find us. Always go to our website, DisneyDiscussions.com, and you get our social links and where to find. You can listen to our show, where to find our show. But also we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, all those places. Just search for Disney Discussions. If you have any questions or tips for us or you know we want to know some Disney Cruise tips, email us at podcast at DisneyDiscussions.com. Um, and now check out our merchandise at shop.DisneyDiscussions.com. Um, we're on Twitter at Disney underscore discuss, Instagram at Disney underscore discuss, and Facebook at Disney Discussions, and of course YouTube where you can find our unboxing videos. Just want to remind you, our podcast birthday is coming up. That's right, August twenty eighth. Oh. You ready to get into the Walt Disney World news? Yeah. yeah. All right. Rumor, projection, mapping, and special effects coming to Walt Disney World hotel rooms. Right. So we there was a patent earlier. Is that all hotel rooms? I, I, don't, I have no idea. Probably not. Star Wars. Probably not. Uh, it might be. It's probably definitely going to be Star Wars, okay. and it might be other hotel rooms. So there's a patent filed. We talked about this um, earlier in the year, I think, uh, earlier patent, and this there's a new patent that kind of clarifies what's going on. So hotel rooms at Walt Disney World might be getting a lot more entertaining in the coming future. A recent patent filed by Disney showcases a technology where projection mapping and special effects are built into the room to create a sense of immersion. This patent is called Interactive In-Room Show and Game System and allows for the user to trigger the changes in scenery or effects. That's a boring name. So the drawings show the user playing a video game and the projection mapping to extend the immersion from the screen onto the, all the walls. Whoa. Also, physical objects in the room, like a fan or a light, are also connecting, adding to the immersion so they could dim the lights and have different scenes. The like te- you're playing Battlefront, like the lights could flash if you... Like, yeah, I don't think it's made for Battlefront, but something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The technology was also shown as a way to immerse guests who are reading a story, showing the walls being covered in scenery depicting the the current plot of the story. And physical effects were also triggered by the story in a similar way as the video game. So that seems pretty cool, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, like with the all-star sports, you can play NBA 2K. (laughs) Yeah! Ah! (laughs) You hear the crowd uh, chanting and rooting for you, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's too loud, too loud! Another patent... Uh, shows how Disney is preparing to release a swarm of robots. 
in Star Wars Galaxy Edge. Uh-oh. So as we draw closer to the opening of Star Wars Galaxy Edge next year, another patent was filed that could be related to the themed land. An omnidirectional camera apparatus configured to facilitate omnidirectional stereo imaging is described. Doesn't that sound exciting? No. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, the technology is for robotic eyes that can sense objects and other robots around it, just like the human eye. So this technology will be useful for when a robot is inside or in a crowded area where the wireless sensors and GPS tracking tools may become um, hindered by uh, inter- interferences. So, yeah, exactly. Yep, other people's phones, things like that. Optical sensors would allow for the roaming droids in Star Wars Galaxy Edge to avoid other fellow droids in the area. Disney specifically mentioned in the patent that there would be many droids in an indoor-outdoor area. Oh, cool. That would be cool. So robots uh, may be used for entertainment, utilitarian, or other purposes. A plurality of robots may be deployed in an environment and programmed to carry out one or more tasks. Um, in the scenario given, referred to, they were referred to it as a robot swarm. It is often desired for the robots within the swarm to be aware of each other. So this sounds like something cool for Star Wars, but I'm also wondering, remember when we went um, a couple years ago and they did the drone show in Disney yes. Springs? I'm wondering if they're going to use this in drones so they yeah. know how far a dro- drones should be away from each other, Part, yeah. right? So that's pretty cool. Epcot releases 2018 Candlelight Processional Narrators and Details. That's right. So every year they do the Candlelight Processional at Epcot. We didn't get a chance to do this when we went um, because the lines are long, but um, there are dining packages available. So from beginning on November 22nd, Thanksgiving Day, the Disney Parks box says the processional will be formed three times per night at 5 p.m., 6.45, and 8.15 every night at the American Gardens Theater where returning hosts Whoopi Goldberg and Pat Sajak and Neil Patrick Harris will be reading kind of the Christmas story, the biblical Christmas story, and there's a choir behind them and there's candles. It's supposed to be really cool. But that what goes along with this is a dining package. So if you buy into the dining package, uh, they have breakfast dining packages, lunch and dinner dining packages, and then you automatically get tickets. Otherwise, you have to wait on a long line in order to get to see the processional. So for breakfast, it starts at $38 plus tax per person for adults and $22 per plus tax per person for children. So if you know you're going to be in Epcot all day, it might pay to do the breakfast. Yeah. You go do the breakfast in the morning because that's the cheaper of all the options. Yes. And do that. For lunch, it's $50 plus tax per adult and sixteen ninety nine plus tax for children. And then for dinner, it's $55 for adults and sixteen ninety nine for children. So they have a whole list. Check out our website. We have a link to all the people doing the candlelight processional readings. So it's pretty cool. I've always heard it's a great thing to do. I would really like to do it one day. Expedition Everest refurbishment emit to fix the broken Yeti at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Right. So this has been a thing. We talked about this, I think, in the past, where the yeah. Yeti in Expedition Everest broke. And it's almost impossible to fix the way they built it into mm-hmm. the, the mountain. And so at times they've had like strobe lights go on it to make it move. And Joe Rohde is the, uh, the Imagineer yeah. who worked on it. And somebody asked him on Twitter... Uh, what's going on? And he said, we are working on it. You know, so for 10 years, it's been broken. Almost Whoa. like six months after it opened, it broke. So no exact time frame has been given for the project. But publicly, Joe Rohde has stated that the, it will be fixed. WDWNT says that internal sources have also told them personally that they're working on the Everest project. So the lengthy refer- refurbishment and all of its changes um, will bring are clearly in development and the closure is imminent. So one of the reasons why they kind of waited is they wanted Avatar Land to be open before they yeah. shut down because they have to shut down Everest. They can't do rides while they do this. No, so now it's a good time person. to do that. Hi. <laughs> and there's just like these yeah. bright lights in front of the Yeti. <laughs> just fixing the Yeti. <laughs> Nothing to see Don't here. Don't mind me. Christmas overlay of Toy Story Land will be part of hol- holiday offerings with Walt Disney World in 2018. Sunset season greetings enhancements announced. That's right. Oh, that's a lot of words. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. I say it every time there's a lot of words in a title. Yep, so starting November 8th, you'll be able to celebrate the magical season with festive parties, um, captivating holiday decor, delicious treats, and spectacular entertainment. A flurry of fun will return to Disney's Hollywood Studios with Sunset Seasons greetings, featuring immersive new laser effects and snow. Um, so I think it snowed a little bit last year, but they're adding snow, they're adding laser effects. The um, the image they have looks pretty cool. So this is, they do the projections on the Tower Terror, on the Tower Terror building at night, and they have music playing in different scenes. So now they're adding more lights and effects to that, which seems pretty cool. 
cool. Um, we watched a little bit of that online and it looked yes. pretty cool. And also, Hollywood Toy Hotel. Yeah, that's right. They change it. And also, um, Toy Story Land, which just opened a few weeks ago, is going to be themed for Christmas time when it Don't comes. They so already pretty, have Christmas. They have like big Christmas now. lights, but I imagine they'll probably put more. They Light. might put some snow on the ground and um, Christmas wreaths, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Like giant Christmas trees. Yep. That'll be funny. Yep. And uh, also, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam is returning as well. Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. Oh, maybe like. They get a Christmas tree and somehow they make it feel like plastic and it's like as big as you because they do make like toy plastic Christmas trees. Oh, the little ones. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Also, an uh, alien swirling saucers are going to have Christmas uh, music playing while you're on the ride. So that's cool. <laughs> Since it's July, we might as well talk about New Year's. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course we right? have to. So reservations are now available for new and returning New Year's Eve events at the Contemporary Resorts. Oh, cool. So the one I'm going to focus on, they actually have a Pixar party, a New Year's Eve celebration for the whole family, which is cool, a Contemporary Resort. They had this last year. So the event will keep the recent Pixar celebration by offering attendees music, character interactions, food, and theming all related to Pixar movies. Theming. 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 Sarge from Toy Story will welcome guests to the party, uh, where they'll be transported to various worlds from Pixar movies like Up, Inside Out, The Incredibles, oh. and Finding Nemo. There's going to be kids' activities, including boot camp with Sarge, Pixar, face painting, uh, balloon artists, interactive DJs spinning radio, digi- uh, radio Disney songs, a buffet dinner, including a bunch of food that's Pixar-themed, and a view of the famous Magic Kingdom New Year's Eve fireworks. So this celebration will run from 8 p.m. to 2.15 a.m. New Year's Eve, and the price is $119 per guest. But also, I would say don't go there on New Year's Eve. It gets packed. Yeah, well, this is good because you actually don't have to go in the park. You just go to the Contemporary Resort, and you're not with all those crowds. But in, in the park itself, you're right. It gets really, really crowded. They had to shut down Magic Kingdom. Yeah, last year there was a couple of days they had they couldn't let any new people in. All right, so there was a power loss July 12th. So lots of technical issues Wow. at Hollywood Studios. Uh, yeah, July 12th. So multiple attractions are were closed at Disney's Hollywood Studios because of an uh, HVAC, which is their AC system, breaking down, including the new Toy Story Land. Whoa. So it started, I'm not sure what time it started, but around 7.45 p.m., attractions slowly became came back online. Uh, Alien Swirling Saucers, Rock and Roller Coasters, Muppet Vision were returning, but Slinky Dog was still down for a while. And by 8.45 at night, all the attractions were back open. They were actually offering guests tickets to other parks because they weren't sure when it would be, when everything would come back on. And they had all their fast passes turned to uh, multi-track, multi, multi, sorry, not multi-track, multi-attraction, multi-use fast passes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Big, ma- major issues. Yeah. So we, <sighs> remember we talked about Duffy uh, KidCut stuff going away? Yes. So they announced the new stuff. It's uh, presented by Ziploc. New Ziploc KidCut Fun Stops debut at, around World Showcase at Epcot. Cool. So you get a little Ziploc bag. Um, oh. Here, I'll show you guys the picture. So you get a little Ziploc bag that looks like a suitcase, like that, and it has interactive things. So each country you go in, um, you get a different mm-hmm. card about that country. So there's a Canada one, United Kingdom, there's a coloring page, and you just get little facts on what the capital city of that, that country is. So you get you can get each one uh, for each country that's there. Well, that's cool, yeah. actually. It's a Ziploc. <laughs> yeah, it's a little Ziploc bag. But that's pretty cool, I thought. That's co- co- cooler than Duffy. I think so. Mm. Yep. Gonna miss <laughs> uh, Rivers of Light Dessert Party is coming to Animal Kingdom and reservations are open. now open. So new dining experience. Oh. You can add a sweet ending to your day by enjoying a beautiful buffet of Disney, Disney's Animal Kingdom themed desserts, snacks and drinks before enjoying a VIP view of River of Life. You can start checking in 60 minutes prior to the main show, which is usually at uh, 8.15 for 9.15 show of Rivers of Life. Uh, the price is $79 for adults, $47 for children, and must be paid at full in the time of booking. So, they love their dessert parties. They do, they do. a lot for stuff. They do. And their dance parties. <laughs> they love their dance parties. And since it's July, let's talk about Christmas a little bit more. So, you know how they do the tree trail at Disney Springs? They have yeah. different Christmas trees that are themed. There's yeah. going to be five new trees coming to the trail in 2018. So, there's going to be a new Haunted Mansion tree. A Star Wars tree with lightsaber garland. A oh, four cool. par- parks tree with a monorail, so a themed around all four Walt Disney World parks. Nordic Winter, 
a nostalgic Mickey and Minnie. So pretty cool. Yeah, they should make a Toy Story one. Or have, have, yeah, they have one already. Like building blocks on it. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And then, and we all know that Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday is coming up, and they revealed the portrait for his birthday. Have you guys seen this? No. What it looks like? We so haven't. Check, you guys check out our show notes, the listeners. But here are you guys. So it's kind of Mickey sprinkling pixie dust around the world while he's flying by balloons. Pretty nice, right? Yeah, that's a cool picture. Yeah. Too. So that's the yeah. official portrait. It was released at uh, San Diego Comic Con this week. Oh, no, everything's released at San Diego mm-hmm. Comic Con. It, it's going back to the first one for de- for decoration for Christmas in Toy Story Land. Um, around the park, they should have giant Christmas like giant Christmas hook balls for the tree for a, like a real size tree, like giant. Yeah. Oh, ball. they might do that. They had something like that in the lake, Echo Lake, last year. So they might do that for Toy Story Land. That'd be cool. All right, you guys ready to do the main topic? Main topic. So we announced uh, a couple of podcasts ago, there's a new Disney Play app, right? And on it, there's trivia and games you could play while you're in the park. But there's some trivia you could do outside the park. So I thought it'd be fun to play some trivia right now in the park. Uh, not in the park, in our podcast. Are we allowed to, um, if the other person gets the question wrong and we know the answer, are we allowed to get um, a certain amount of points for that? No, I don't think so, because I think it'll give me the right answer when I, as soon as I press it. So we'll see. But I'll keep track of score. Okay. All right, you guys, we want to do Walt Disney World, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. What um, do you want to do, Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios? Magic Kingdom. Hollywood Studios. Rock, Paper, Scissors. Stitch was first, so we'll do Magic yeah, Kingdom. But, hmm, I thought I had a queen. Oh, I have a queen. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll do Magic Kingdom. Uh, do you guys want to do... All right, Disney Park Trivia at Magic Kingdom. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm, I am ready. Can I go first, though? Since he chose the park. Yes. Okay. All right, this is for the hub trivia. So where oh. the partner statue is, the main hub. Okay. Of okay. Question one of ten. True or false? The Tri-Circle D Ranch at Walt Disney World Resort actually opened before Magic Kingdom Park. True. True? It is true. Very Yay. good. Sparrow gets a point. I have no idea. What Walt Disney World wanted Walt Disney wanted to make sure that Main Street USA had horses during the debut of Magic Kingdom Park, so the barn opened early to give horses time to rehearse. Is it a right. true or false question? That one was. Here's here's not a true or false question. You ready? Mm-hmm. How many stories do you slide down on Humunga Kawabunga at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park? I don't know why that's hub trivia. Um, Here to A nine, B five, C one. D16. So how tall? Like how many stories? Can you read me Stitch. them again? How many stories do you slide down on no, Humunga no, Kaobunga at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Park? Nine, five, one, or thirteen? Five. Five? Yes. Good job. Tied one to one. Woo-hoo. I got the question now. Though. Which sport is Princess Merida skilled at in the animated feature Brave? Croquet? Baseball? Fencing? Or archery? Archery. Hmm, that was an easy one. It was very It easy. was archery. Why would it be baseball? All right, Stitch. Thank you. Which of the following attractions allows you to ride in a group raft at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon what? Water Park? Aquadunk, Gangplank Falls, Mount Mayday, or the Stormer? Aquaduck. Aquadunk. Dunk. All right. Well, no, think. Gangplank Falls. I was going to say. That's right. We've never been to Typhoon Lagoon. We need to go next trip, though. Are you ready, Sparrow? Yes. In 2012, mm-hmm. Disney's Blizzard Beach Water Park joined 500 host locations to help set a world record for what feat? The world's biggest water balloon fight? The world's largest wave? The world's largest swimming lesson? Or the world's largest game of Marco Polo? Now remember, it's a 2012... Disney's Blizzard Beach Water Park joined 500 host locations to help set a world record for what feat? Disney would probably do something crazy. So maybe world's largest water balloon fight. Water balloon fight? Yes. No, oh, I'm sorry. Swimming lesson. I thought Swimming it was, lesson. I was thinking between water balloon fight or Marco Polo. Mm. Uh, that's what I would do. The key there was that it, it was other locations too. So it's hard to do water balloon fight at other places. Right. You ready, Stitch? Yep. Before the storm... Leaning Palms at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park was known by what name? Before the storm, Leaning Palms at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park was known by what name? Picturesque Palms Ranch, Placid Palms Resort, 
Paradise Palms Motor Inn or Perfect Palms Hotel? Perfect Palms Hotel. That would have been my guess, too. Oh, Placid Palms Resort. Placid? I don't understand why the hub trivia is all these uh, water Typhoon park Typhoon Lagoon questions. stuff. It's like... Here it is again. What is the name of the original character mascot of Disney's Blizzard Beach Water Park? Alley Gator? Little Orange Bird? Chili McCool? Or Ice Gator? The first one. Alley Gator? Yeah. It's incorrect. Ice Skater. Ice I, Skater. I was like Ice Skater. Skater. And I was thinking Ice Skater. All right, you ready, Stitch? The draft horses that pull the Main Street trolley through Magic Kingdom Park sure are heavy. On average, how much does each one weigh? So how much do the trolleys weigh? 700 to 900 pounds? 1,000 to 1,300 pounds? 1,400 to 1,700 pounds? Or 1,800 pounds to 2,100 pounds? The second. Second one? 1,000 to 1,300 pounds? Yeah. Incorrect. 1,800 to 2,100 pounds. Mm. All right. Still tied. No, not tied. Sparrow has two. Stitch has one. Ready, Sparrow? Yes. How many beams make up the Walt Disney World monorail system? How many beams make up the Walt Disney World monorail system? You said beams. It says beams. This is a two, three, one, or four. 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 Incorrect. Three beams. I'm not sure what it means by beams. Yeah. Four beams. All right, you ready? You ready, Stitch? You could tie this up. What were the first ever words spoken on screen by Mickey Mouse? You ain't heard nothing yet. Hot dog, swell, or oh boy. Hot dog. Hot dog is correct. Very Talked good. about it with Pluto. That's right. That was one of our trivia questions, Hot I think. Hot dog. All right. Um, and I forget her name. Ahsoka. Oh, yeah. And Ahsoka. Okay. All right. So let's go to another area where there's trivia. Do you want to do Fantasyland trivia? Uh, Tomorrowland trivia. What do you want to do? Is there a New Orleans Square? No, this is Disney World. So Adventureland? Is that what you're looking yes, for? Yes, Adventureland. Adventureland by, you want to do Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my All expertise. Right. Let's do... <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm expert at. Let's do Adventureland. You guys ready? Yeah, let's see how many get right in this. All right, let's go. Adventureland trivia. Sparrow, this is for you. Okay. What coin-operated attraction once existed outside the Jungle Cruise exit at Magic Kingdom Park? Was it the Plaza Swan Boats? The Mike Fink Keel Boats, Shrunken Ned's Junior Jungle Boats, or Magic Journeys? Shrunken Ned's Junior Jungle Boats. That is correct. Well done, So it's just my area. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, yeah. You ready, Sparrow? Well, yep. I mean, Stitch. Stitch. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Sparrow. Sparrow, I'm Stitch. True or false? Jose is currently one of the fine feathered hosts of the Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. Oh, I know this one. Jose. <laughs> True or False. false. False? It is true. I knew that. I, I, I seriously knew that. You knew that one? Yeah, I did. I was going to say true. What type of animal will you not encounter inside the temple during the Jungle Cruise? Now, we have never done the Jungle no. Cruise, so. Okay. Tiger, elephant, cobra, or spider? Elephant. Correct. <laughs> it's hard to get a... Uh, elephant inside a temple. Inside a temple, yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yellow. No, no animal chunks. You ready, Stitch? Mm -hmm. What type of animals splash about in the bathing pool during the Jungle Cruise? Gorillas, elephants, zebras, or tigers? Oh, it's easy. What kind of animals bathe? Splash about? Can you read me the answers again? Gorillas, elephants, zebras, or tigers? Gorillas. Cause, is, that cause your, is that your final answer? Tigers? No. Cause the no. Third type of cats, cats eat water. That's true. Guys, <sighs> deal. No. Can you read me? <sighs> Gorillas, elephants, zebras, or tigers? Zebras? I'm sorry, <laughs> but you went all elephants. around it. It was elephants. If hippo wasn't one of right, the answers, it was ready? elephants. According to Claude and Clyde, Walt Disney's Enchanted Eek Room is in what pavilion? The Tree Pavilion? Sunshine Pavilion? Jungle Pavilion? Or Bird Pavilion? Bird Pavilion. No, Sunshine Pavilion. I mean, it has a bunch of 
have birds in it, so... All right, Stitch, you ready? Yep. What type of Jungle Cruise animals play at the Trapped Safari Party? Jungle Cruise animals play at the Trapped Safari Party. Hmm? Dolphins, hyenas, chimpanzees, or orangutans? Chimpanzee. Incorrect. Mm. Hyenas. <laughs> Sparrow? Yes. Pele is the tiki goddess of what? Dole whips? Pineapples? Time? Or fire and volcanoes? Fire and volcano. That is correct. Sparrow has five points. Stitch has two. Dole whip. Question number weird. eight for Adventureland <laughs> Trivia. <laughs> Dole whip. Are you ready, Stitch? <laughs> The Swiss mm-hmm. Family Treehouse, which we've been on, mm-hmm. was built Fun. was built in a Disney Oranodon Extremis, which translate into English as what? Ancient oak tree, out of the ordinary Disney tree, native Florida tree, a really tall Disney tree. <laughs> to Disney Ondarian Eximus. Ancient oak tree, out of the ordinary Disney tree, native Florida tree. Really tall Disney tree. Native floor, no. Really tall Disney tree? No, out of the ordinary, ordinary Disney, Disney tree. tree. All right, question number nine goes to you, Sparrow. Yay. True or false? Mm-hmm. The Jungle Cruise in Magic Kingdom Park is the original version of the traction. True. No, false. 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 It's correct. Yes. It opened in Disneyland first. Okay. True or false? But you didn't give me a point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Six points to Sparrow. Hey, don't forget my point. True or false, Stitch? Pirates of the Caribbean was originally planned as a walkthrough wax museum. True. That is true. true. All right. I actually kind of would have liked the walkthrough ma- Three to walk six. through wax museum. That would have been cool, though. All right, there's another round for Adventureland, or we could go on to another land. What another round for Adventureland. Adventureland? Since I'm crushing it here. All right, next round. This will probably be the last one, okay? Okay. True or false? Pierre is currently one of the fine feathered hosts of the Walt Disney Enchanted Tiki Room. This is for you, Sparrow. Uh, True. That is correct. Seven points for Sparrow. I told you this is my expertise, this area. (laughs) Alrighty, Stitch, you ready? Mm -hmm. What Adventureland eatery is owned and operated by the Jungle Navigation Company? Mm -hmm. Is it Sunshine (laughs) Sunshine (laughs) Tree Terrace? Aloha Isle? The Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen or Tartuga Tavern? Tartuga Tavern. No, Tartuga Tavern was from Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh What Adventureland eatery is owned and operated by the Jungle Navigation Company? Okay. Sunshine Sunshine Uh Tree. No, Sunshine Tree Terrace. Aloha Isle. Jungle Navigation Company Skipper Canteen or Tartuga Tavern? Which is owned by the Jungle Navigation Company? Sunshine Tree Terrace? <laughs> Dad. Aloha Isle? Jungle Navigation Company Skimperland Canteen? <laughs> yes. Very good. Wow. Four points. That was, oh, wow. That was really hard. Sparrow. Yeah. The Jungle Navigation Company was founded by what famed explorer? Henry Jones Sr. <laughs> Dr. Albert Falls? <laughs> Christopher Columbus <laughs> or Galileo? Hmm. Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Christopher Columbus. Yes. That's your answer. Yes. That is incorrect. Christopher it's Doctor Albert Falls. Falls. <laughs> Did he fall a lot? <laughs> no. My, my name's Albert, and I fall. <laughs> Albert. No falls, falls like the uh, waterfalls. Oh, so oh. It's made up. Are you ready, Stitch? Yeah. Jungle Navigation Company is currently owned by what adventuress? Alberta Portrait. Alberta River, Alberta Falls, Alberta Jungle. Alberta Jungle. Incorrect. It's Alberta Falls. <laughs> she falls a lot, too. Yeah. They're, just, they're clumsy people, those. <laughs> I those know, falls. these falls. Sparrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sparrow. Yeah. What family resides in the Adventureland Treehouse at Magic Kingdom Park? The Hudsons, the Robinsons, the Crickets, or the Sparrows? Cricket. <laughs> the Robinsons. The Robinsons is correct. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, you have eight points. Stitch has four. Wait, how many points are we going to? Uh, we got four more questions. Okay. What animal, Stitch, 
has chased a safari party up a pole on the Jungle Cruise. What animal has chased a safari party up a pole on the Jungle Cruise? A rhino, an elephant, a hyena, or a monkey? A rhino, an elephant, a hyena, or a monkey? Is that your final answer? A rhino, an elephant, a hyena, or a monkey? Come on, Dad. This is considered cheating. <laughs> Give me an answer. It's just for fun, so there's no cheating. What is? Give me an answer. Monkey is your answer. It was a rhino. He went, rhino? Hyena. You ready, Sparrow? <laughs> yeah. Who? I, I, the, I thought you meant chased off a pole. Like, it, the animal went off the pole. No, the animal chased the people up the pole. Oh. Who is the head salesman of the jungle who you encounter in Jungle Cruise? Trader Sam, Trader Molly, Trader Barney, or Trader Mike? Trader Sam. Trader Sam is correct. You know why he's the head salesman? Why? Because he sells people's shrunken heads. Get it? Head salesman? Uh, All right, Stitch. Yep. Which of the following was... Give me my point. Which of... Oh, sorry. You keep forgetting to give me my point. I do, I do. You have nine. Which of the following was an opening day attraction at Magic Kingdom Park? You ready, Stitch? This is for you. Opening day attraction at the Magic Kingdom Park was a Jungle Cruise, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Pirates of the Caribbean, or Space Mountain? Jungle Cruise, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Pirates of the Caribbean, Space Mountain. Big Thunder Mountain. I'm sorry, that jungle is incorrect. Cruise. It was, in fact, the Jungle Cruise. They fall asleep? What happened there? Last point. All right. Last question? There's one more question after this. <laughs> Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room is introduced by Claude and who else? Clyde, Pierre, Barry, or Jose? And if you paid attention... A previous question had this answer in it. Clyde. Or Clyde, whatever it was. Clyde, yep. That is correct. Yep. Ten points. Clyde what? Clyde. Clyde. Yeah. True or false? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> True it or false, though. Stitch. Iago is currently a host at the Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. Iago from Aladdin. Is he currently a host at the Walt oh. Disney's... That is false. He once was, though. Oh, really? Under new management, it was Iago. Iago. Yep. Siago. All right. I wonder who wins. All right. Sparrow wins with 10. Stitch had five. Maybe we'll do the rest of the <laughs> trivia another time. On the, maybe, on next, the, maybe next podcast it'll be part two. Yep. Of Disney and trivia. we'll continue on the, the, like it'll continue off points. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yes. Let us know how you guys did with the crew, with the cruise, with the, the quiz. Disney quiz. And you can play along at the Disney Play app. Just download that yeah. from your app store. All right. Just now get it's the time. answers before you do the <laughs> Now it's time for the Disney Media Pick of the Week. Media Pick of the Week. This Media Pick of the Week is brought to you by MickeyCatch.com, Mickey a magical place to chat all things Disney. And we recommend Love of the Mouse podcast. That's our Media Pick of the Week. That's right. Matt Marlino, who is a co-host of the Love of the Mouse podcast. And did our new logo. That's right. He did our new logo, and he does a great podcast. So check him out, loveofthemousepodcast.com, and also on Twitter at LOTM Podcast. It's a great Disney podcast. They have some great stuff going on, brand new, um, just maybe six six episodes in. So check them out. They're doing great stuff. Really recommend them. You guys ready for some Disney trivia? Trivia. Disney Trivia is brought to you by T Public. Go to shop.disneydiscussions.com to purchase our merchandise. We have, like we said, we have our logo on shirts, uh, all kinds of shirts, sweatshirts. We have it on notebooks and phone cases and stickers, but also we have some other cool Disney shirts there. So check that out. And like we said earlier, we have a coupon code going for this week from the 24th to the 30th of July. Use the coupon code ALOHA, A-L-O-H-A, at checkout, and you'll get 30% off your order, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's right. All caps. A-L-O-H-A, ALOHA, as the coupon code. <laughs> right. All right. So now, for as we mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, Disneyland had its 63rd anniversary uh, this year, just a few weeks ago, and I want you to know that the day that Disneyland opened, it was a disaster. I just want to say something about Jurassic Park. It involves Disneyland. That we just watched the original Jurassic Park the other day. And um, so the guy, John Hammond, he said Disneyland's opening wrong. He said, 
1955. And then he said, well, 1955 when Disneyland... No, he said 56. 56? Yeah. Oh. Well, 1956 when, uh, when Disneyland completely failed... Everything went wrong. And then Ian Malcolm's like, yeah, well, the animatronics of Pirates of the Caribbean didn't try to eat the riders. That's right. Two things wrong with that. Yes. Pirates of the Caribbean wasn't there yeah. when Disneyland first opened, and they got the year wrong. But so Disneyland opened on July 17th, 1955. Um, and they actually did, they call it Black Sunday because it went really, really poorly. They were still doing construction right up until the end. So here's, uh, I found a list online, the 10 most disastrous things that happened. Oh. So fake Tickets flooded the market. Disneyland's opening day was invite only, and not for the public. But tickets were mailed. Tickets were mailed out uh, only for reserved for special guests, including friends and family of employees and the press. But Disneyland was expecting about fifteen thousand people uh, right. guests, but twenty eight thousand actually showed up and entered the park. So a lot more than they were expecting. So it got really crowded. In addition, there were two sets of tickets with designated times, one for the morning, one for the afternoon, and the time to leave Disneyland was printed on each ticket. So if it read 2.30 p.m., you were supposed to leave the park at that time, but nobody paid any attention to it. The morning crowd didn't leave, so attendance ballooned in the afternoon. Um, there was even more money to be made from Disney's world. One man set up a ladder outside of the park fence and charged $5 per person to climb it and sneak in. All right, traffic was also backed up for miles. Since Disneyland and the city of Anaheim were not prepared for the amount of people that showed up, the Santa Ana freeway that led into the park was backed up for seven miles. It was essentially a parking lot. They were not prepared. The park was covered with wet paint and weeds. Oh. Completing Disneyland was a race to the finish, and Walt Disney wanted a quick turnaround, and it took exactly one year and one day from announcement to opening day, with construction crews working around the clock. However, one of the do once the doors opened, guests could easily see that it was not completely finished. Workers were still painting structures and planting trees all over the park. Along the canal boats of the world, now the storybook land canal boats, weeds had yet to be removed from the riverbanks. And instead of landscaping the area, Walt Disney simply added signs with Latin plant names printed on them to make it look like they were meant to be there. A number of rides were still under construction, like the Tomorrowland rockets to the moon, which showcased a glimpse of what space travel would look like in... 1986. The next thing that happened for the lucky people who made it into Disneyland on opening day, they experienced a shortage of food and beverages in every restaurant and concession stand in the park. Because of the unexpected influx of guests, virtually all food and drink inventory was wiped out within hours. The title of number four disaster was No Food, No Drink, No Fun. That's right. There was also a plumber strike. <laughs> So while there was plenty of water fountains on site, many of them were not working because there was a plumber strike. And Walt Disney felt it was more important for the bathrooms to work than for the water fountains, which was a good choice. Yeah. The weather was scorching. Although Walt Disney had no control over the weather and contributed to the disastrous opening, temperatures reached into an intense 100 degrees. So really, really hot. And that day was so hot that the fresh asphalt became like sticky tar with guests complaining that they were getting their shoes and high heels stuck in the pavement. On Main Street. So you're walking along and your shoe gets stuck right in the sidewalk. Rides were breaking down no, like that. so many... Yeah. Getting stuck getting stuck in the middle of Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> like so many other workers uh, toiling to make Walt Disney's one-year deadline, both Disney Imagineers and construction workers rushed to complete the theme park. As a result, a number of rides, including Peter Pan's Flight, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and Dumbo the Flying Elephant in Fantasyland broke down and were closed altogether because they simply had not finished yet. The Mark Twain Riverboat sank. Guess on it? No, let's find out. The iconic Mark Twain Riverboat in Frontierland was filled way over capacity on opening day with about 500 people cramming into the attraction. This caused the boat to go off its track and sink into the mud, and the ordeal was far from over. It took about 20 to 30 minutes to get it fixed and back on the rail, and it came chugging in, said Tom O'Brown, who later recalled in an interview. As soon as it pulled into the landing, all the people rushed to the side to get off, and the boat tipped into the water again. So they all had to wade off through the water, and some of them were pretty mad. So the, the actual the rivers aren't very deep, and the boats actually oh, okay. do run on a track. But yeah, That's good that so. they weren't that deep, though. Sleeping Beauty's castle almost caught fire. A gas leak in the park prompted the closing of Adventureland, Fantasyland, and Frontierland for a few hours while flames from the leak were seen trying to engulf Sleeping Beauty's castle. Walt Disney was so busy during opening day that he didn't learn about the fire until the following day. And they actually did a live show. This is one of the first 
live television events where they filmed the opening of Disneyland Live, and it was a train wreck. Walt Disney had a partnership with broadcast network ABC, which helped finance Disneyland with an investment. On opening day, Walt Disney hosted a 90-minute live TV special with co-host Art Linkletter, Bob Cummings, and the future president, Ronald Reagan. Over 90 million viewers turned in to see the happiest place on Earth. While the camera showed the fun and excitement of Disneyland, the TV special obscured the numerous disasters described. However, the live broadcast itself was riddled with technical difficulties, such as guests tripping over camera cables all over the park, faulty miscues, on-air flubs, hot mics, and unexpected moments that were caught on camera. Can we watch that? Probably. So yeah, so even though Walt Disney... So I like this because you look at Walt Disney and the life he led, led... He failed many, many times, but he never let that stop him, right? That was the 10th. That was the 10th, yeah. He never let that stop him. And I think that's good for us in our lives, right, boys? Yeah. We should never let something failing stopping us from doing what we really think we should do, right? And I hope you guys listening, Walt Disney's story is really an amazing story, so check that out. There's lots of books about him. All right, so our question of the week, moving on. Last week we asked, because we had our Build the Park series, it was the last phase, and we asked you which three rides, character meet and greet, store, and two of anything else would you pick? And Kara Hughes said her son, Reese, said he would like his rides to be the Seas with Nemo's and Friends, Frozen Ever After, Peter Pan's Flight. His character meet and greet would definitely be Baymax. That's a good one. The store would be Mouse Gears because he got to turn the gears on when the store opened and got a magical moment certificate when he went. So that's pretty cool. And for his other two things, and his mom says, I think he's cheating now. He wants Typhoon Lagoon to be added to the park as a land area or at least one of the water tube slides on the other side. Would He said would be Blizzard Peach. So he wants both water parks in our parks. Mm, that's a little bit of cheating, cheating but it's still it's, it would look pretty cool. It right? would. All right, so our question of the week this week is going to be, give us some Disney Cruise yes. tips. Have you guys ever been on a Disney Cruise? Mm-hmm. What What's the one or two things you would have liked to have known about a Disney Cruise before you went on it the first time? Because we would really use some help. We're excited to go, but we don't know anything about it. So any tips or tricks you have would be really helpful. All right, guys, you have anything else you want to talk about? Not really. All right, well, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Check out our new logo and our merchandise. We're really excited for it. Uh, and keep on listening. We really appreciate it. Like I said, be sure to tell your friends and family, any other Disney friends that you have, be sure to check out our store. Again, we're not looking to make a lot of money from this podcast at all. We're just looking to help cover the cost of equipment and hosting. That's all we really want to do is cover our hobby. Be sure to check us out, DisneyDiscussions.com. There's links to all of our social media, places that we are, interact with us. We'd love to hear from you. And please answer our question of the week. What Disney Cruise Line tips do you have? Or if you have any questions about Disney Cruise Lines, let us know and maybe we can answer them. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. See you real soon. Hello. Aloha. me tony the disney dad and my two boys sparrow, sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> i purposely did that so i, I right, want I'll do it over again that's okay i wanted to say before all right if you didn't listen to last uh <laughs> <laughs> you have to put that one before there's in the bloopers god go to the bathroom <laughs> i'm assuming silver chair isn't made by disney what is it the Narnia movie, Silver Chair. Is no, they, movie. Disney sold it. They sold it? Yeah, they, they don't want to do it anymore. Oh, It's kind of stupid. Well, they're making the- money. They made money with the first one, but I think the other two didn't make too much money. Oh, yeah. Prince Caspian was terrible. Yeah, you didn't like that one? No, I read the book. The book is way better. Yeah. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, it was way better than the book. Oh, really? Voyage of the Dawn Treader? What company um is making silver chair? I forget who they said. Okay. I forget. Yeah, I don't remember. Disney probably would have made a lot of money off silver chair if they had it, cause so. it's been a while, and that's like a pretty sure people love silver chair. I know that, but it's stupid that Disney sold it. What's that? It's stupid that they sold the rights to Narnia. It wasn't making money. 
But it probably would have made money. It's the problem. But it's the problem. It would have made money. Silver Chair and Last Battle would make money. Mm. And none of those have Peter Susan and Min Lucy in it. Right. Except at the end of Last Battle. Oh, really? Yeah. When they're all dead. <laughs> they die in the last battle in our name.